friends, welcome to the Motion Run channel. Here, it's all about motion design and selling templates on stock platforms. I've always been interested in breaking down this kind of graphic element from Eleven Labs. So today, I'll show you exactly how to do it, and we'll create a small text animation. So let's proceed to create a new shape layer, then add an ellipse, and subsequently add a fill to it. Change the fill to white. Set the size to 500. For now, set the opacity to 20. And let's lock our layer. This is so we can see, so to speak, the area where we need to draw. Next, using the pen tool, start drawing triangles from the center to the edge. And now we make a simple triangle shape like this right here. And we draw completely random triangles. Um, effectively covering the entire area of the given circle. It's really important that the edges of these individual triangles precisely touch each other and um, that there is a perfectly straight line along the entire outer edge of this circular shape. And now, with careful consideration, we will proceed to fill the entire circular area with completely random and varied triangles. Next, I prepared a color palette, and also, more or less randomly, so that the colors don't repeat next to each other, so the same ones aren't together. We change the colors for all the triangles randomly as well. Importantly, I would leave one or two triangles white to create an accent with the white color. Next, while holding ALT, we open rotation, and still holding ALT, we enter the expression time multiplied by a certain number. The number should be kept small. And we also paste, copy this expression, and paste it into all the other rotations of these triangles and we change the number by which time will be multiplied randomly as well, say more or less in the range from 5 to, let's say, 40. We change these values so that they don't have too much of a gap. You can use values similar to mine. And this is what we get. It's as if the triangles are just spinning from the center. We add the turbulent displace effect to one of the triangles. Set turbulent to smooth and set the amount to 25, size to 75. And that's it, we don't change anything else. Copy and paste all the other triangles and you'll get a slightly distorted but identical result. Next we drag this composition into another composition. That is, the composition will be created inside a new composition. And we'll rename it to main. Here we'll have our main animation. We will now turn off our initial original circle so it doesn't mess up the entire overall design of our project. And let's proceed to create a precise mask by creating a new shape layer, then adding an ellipse tool and applying a fill. However, we need to make the size of this ellipse a bit smaller in order to effectively create a clean and accurate mask and subsequently trim away these noticeably uneven edges. Following this, we will carefully apply an alpha mat to this newly created mask and as a result, we will achieve this desired visual effect. We will now add radial blur to our triangles. For this effect, set the spin parameter to about 30 and the quality setting to high. Upon applying these settings, we will observe this cool blur effect. Next, duplicate this layer, our composition, and then rotate it. The reason for this step is that, in some moments during the rotation, there will be gaps that appear, and we need to fill those gaps. You can accomplish this by duplicating the composition and rotating it by 45 to 90 degrees. Or just any arbitrary value. The main thing is that when rotating, this empty area gets covered. And you get this cool effect.
Next, let's write some text using the type tool. I'll type 11 labs, center everything, set the anchor point to the center and move it a bit to the right. Okay, and for now I'll hide this text. Let's animate this 11 labs logo now. We'll add a null object and set the scale to 150. Let's move a bit further, about one and a half seconds in. We'll set a second keyframe and set the value to 50. So we'll have this kind of scale animation. Zoom out. And in the animation graph, the value will be around 80. Um, I'll also add an animation for the opacity. You can just animate the mask instead of animating two compositions. It will reveal through the mask and will animate the opacity. An animation using opacity. There, just a short one, right at the most dynamic moment. And we'll get something like this. Alright, next let's turn on the text and work with our text. Let's drag it out to about 2 seconds. Next, let's add an animator. It's important for the paragraph to be aligned to the left because we'll be animating tracking and opacity in the animators. Set the opacity value to 0 and tracking to about 30. Set a keyframe at the start, then move about 1.5 seconds forward and set the value to 100. And we get this kind of animation. Let's go to the animation graph and make it dynamic with as if at the beginning and then a smooth fade out. And we end up with this kind of text animation. Next, let's additionally animate the position of the null objects. Roughly at the one second mark, well, also about one and a half seconds to the right, set the second keyframe and animate the position to the left. And let's not forget, um, let's link, let's link the text. For now, let's um, move the keyframe so nothing gets messed up. We link it to the null and return the keyframes to their original position. Set the animation graphs 80. Please, find the fastest part of the video, if you would. We also meticulously find the fastest part within our text, specifically in the animation graphs, and then carefully drag them so that they precisely match up. Here we can see they match up. And this gives us a dynamic animation like this. I just need to move the text a bit because it doesn't look very aesthetic to me like this. Like the text was too far from the logo and you can also move it a bit more to the left. I see that in terms of placement in the composition everything was more or less centered and let's see what we've got. Let's take a closer look, in much better quality. Let's quickly do a pre-render now. So here's actually what we got right here then. It looks really quite cool. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and as always, I will certainly see you in the next exciting lessons.